In Jesus' name we pray. Blessed, glorious, blessed people of God. I said in Jesus' name we pray. More wonders. More power. More authority. More victory. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. You will move every mountain. You will cross every ocean. All the works of the devil in your life destroyed in Jesus' name. You will be a wonder. I said you will be a wonder. An unforgettable thing will happen in your life even tonight in Jesus' name. Raise up that blessed hand, that anointed hand. Everything you touch will touch will go turn to blessing. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because the heavens are opened. You are going to bless your own children. Every brother, every sister, every father, every mother, every wife, every husband, every student, every youth, every child. Oh Lord, I pray, rays of wonder will come upon every life in Jesus' name. Make your people conquer. Conquer the devil. Conquer the tempter. Conquer every evil. Conquer wickedness. Conquer wicked powers. And Lord, we pray that the power to continue in victory. You will grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Every plant the heavenly father has not planted in any life here. Lord, begin to work. With heavenly bulldozer, begin to work. All, all those things that are not planted by the heavenly father in our lives when you created us uproot everything in Jesus name wonders miracle power signs anointing breakthrough husband wife children job satisfaction supply everything your people need from the natural to the supernatural grant unto them in jesus name confirm your promise in every life tonight we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray don't sit down yet don't sit down yet where you are march on the head of the devil March on the head of all your problems. March. March unto victory. Unto success. Unto breakthrough. You are victorious in Jesus' name. God bless you. Stand. You can now sit down in your victory. You have got the victory. We're coming to Psalm 71. Psalm 71, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. My mouth be filled, let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. From tonight, you will be a wonder. The wonders of the Lord will begin in a dynamic way in your life. And from tonight, you'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. That Psalm 71 said, I am as a wonder. People will see you and wonder. They see your family and wonder. They see the blessings of God in your life and wonder. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 7. Zechariah chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 7. It says in verse 7, Thou says the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, 
and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. As the Lord was talking to this Joshua, this is not the Joshua of uh, Exodus to the book of Joshua. This is another Joshua. I think uh, this is you here. I said you are the beloved pe person here. The Lord was saying, if you walk in my statutes, if you go in the direction of my way, I'm going to give you a special place among these victorious ones that stand by. Look at verse 8. Hear now, O Joshua. Hear now, O brother. Hear now, O sister. Hear now, O minister, high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. For they are men wondered at. People will wonder at you. You used to hang your head in weakness, hide your head in feebleness, hide your head in fainting, but now you stand and your shoulders are up. And you're not looking down, you're looking up. And you carry the air, you carry the appearance of a conqueror. I'm talking to somebody there tonight. You will conquer in Jesus' name. <laughs> Men and women to wonder at. Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 43. Luke chapter 9, verse 43. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, everyone at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down in your ears. They were wondering. They looked at Jesus. They looked at his work. They look at his manifestation. They looked at everything indeed. And, and they wondered. And while they were wondering, he called his disciples and said, you need to allow these sayings, this message, this word to sink deep into your ears. And thank God, it sank into their ears and the power came upon them. Instead of only wondering, at what Christ has done, people now began to wonder at what they were doing. People will wonder at you. <laughs> Acts chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 10. Acts chapter 3. We're reading from verse 10. It tells us, And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder. When they see miracles of your life, people will be filled with wonder in Jesus' name. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. The blessed wonder. The blessed wonder. We're looking at three things tonight. Number one, the wonder of conquering. The wonder of conquering. Number two, the wonder of conformity. The wonder of conformity. Number three, the wonder of continuity. The wonder of continuity. Number one, the wonder of conquering the tempter by the world. And you need to have a secret here. You know the secret? There are people who do not understand that once you take a wrong step, and the devil, he knows the precious things you carry. And he knows the great things you have. And once you don't know that, he comes in a particular crafty way. He comes in a subtle manner. And he brings temptation to you. And once you fall to that, the rest of the story is a story of defeat. But thank God, you will overcome. You will succeed. You are going to have a breakthrough. Once that tempter comes and you say, I know you, I recognize you, the master, the Messiah, Christ Jesus conquered you, I am going to conquer you in the same way. Once you conquer the tempter, you conquer every other sin in your life. And somebody there you will conquer. 
I said you will conquer the wonder of conquering the tempter by the word. Point number two. The wonder of, com of, of conformity in totality to the word. The wonder of conformity in totality to the word. The word of God comes to you. And then you say, I'm going to conform. I'm going to comply. I'm going to walk side by side along with the word of God. The word of God is going to be personified in me. Every commandment, every promise, and everything the Lord had said, I'm going to internalize it. And then I'm going to be like Jesus Christ because it's the word personified. And I'm going to have total, entire, complete, 100% conformity unto that word. The wonder of conformity in totality to the world. Point number three now, the wonder of continuity in the truth of the word. The wonder of continuing in the truth of the word. The wonder of continuation in the truth of the word. The wonder of of continuity in the truth of the word. If these three items of wonder, number one, number two, number three, are revealed in your life, thank God you will conquer from A to Z. You will conquer from January to December. You will conquer from now until you enter the gates of heaven in Jesus' name. Number one, the wonder of conquering the tempter by the word. Do you remember at the time when Jesus Christ was just to enter the ministry of miracles, the ministry of manifestation, the ministry of wonders, the ministry of life, the ministry that will change the lives of hundreds of thousands and millions and billions of people. Just before that time, the tempter came. And when the tempter came, thank God he overcame. I said, thank God he overcame. And because he overcame, you will overcome. Are you there? I said, you have become an overcomer. And before you enter into the breakthrough of your life, before you enter into the wonderment of life, before you enter into wonder of all wonders, manifestation in your life, manifestation in your family, manifestation in your place of work, manifestation in every area of your life, just before you enter, because the devil does not change his methods, he comes. And as he comes, if you didn't know, that this is the gateway to the miraculous. If you didn't know that this is the gateway to the better life, to the higher life, and to the more and more, the progressive life the Lord has called you to, you might succumb. But now because you know this is the gateway, this is the door that opens for you to get into the supernatural. When that tempter comes, you overcome. Am I talking to somebody there today? You overcome in Jesus' name. Look at this. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. To be tempted of the devil. I want you to jump down to verse 10. I'm still going to read others, but look at verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hands, tell me. Get thee hands, mention the name. Satan. You know, he was hiding you know, under that general name, devil. But Jesus said, I know who you are. You're Satan. Get thee behind me. He'll get behind you in Jesus' name. And we're looking at, I'll come back to Matthew, but we're looking at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 13. Mark chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 13. In Mark chapter 1, verse 13, it says, And it was there in the wilderness, 40 days tempted of Satan. You see, that's the name right there. 
tempted of Satan before you enter into becoming the wonderful wonders and before men will wonder at you here is the gauge the gauge that determines whether you fall to the right or you fall to the left here is the gate, the gate that determines whether you'll be triumphant or you'll be trampled over. Here is the gate, the gate that shows whether you are going to be a wonder or you are going to be a worthless personality. Satan will come. He'll bring temptation. He tells us in that Mark chapter 1 verse 13, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of satan and he was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him i'm coming to luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 8 and reading from verse 13 luke chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 8 look at this wonderful somebody there say wonderful and jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me satan you know, he recognized him. Matthew tells us it's Satan. Mark tells us it's Satan. And now Luke tells us it's Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Look at verse 13. And when the devil, now he goes back to his normal uh, name, it says, When the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Temptations will come, you'll overcome. Yes. Trials will come, you'll overcome. Yes. All those troubles will come, you'll overcome. The devil will try to dribble you here and there so that he'll make you forget your goal. He'll make you forget where you're going. He'll make you to forget the breakthrough that you desire. But when those temptations come, Thank God I am an overcomer. I say, thank God I am an overcomer. Talk for yourself. Thank God I am an overcomer. You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. How did Jesus overcome? How did Jesus conquer? What was this wonder of conquering the tempter by the word? Come back to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was up to watch, hungry and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. You see, Jesus could do that, but he will not listen to the commandment of the devil. You see, Jesus got turn, he turned water into wine, because that will bring glory to God. But this is to glorify Satan. This is to glorify the devil. The devil might come to you. Why don't you have the skill? You have the power. You have the understanding. Don't you say you're a believer? You have the faith. Why don't you turn this to that? Ask yourself, if I did this, is that bringing glory to God? If I go this direction, will that bring glory to God or glory to man or glory to Satan or glory to demon or glory to secret cult? If it's going to bring glory to Satan or secret cult or to self or to man, you know that's temptation, you will not do it. I said you will not do it. And so look at this, he conquered him by the word. You'll conquer by the word. He says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not lay by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. As you tell yourself, and as you tell the devil, as you tell the tempter, as you tell the temptress, I'm going to live by the word of God. My meat is to do. The will of him that sent me to obey the word of him that sent me and to finish his work and to fulfill his word. You conquered the devil. But the devil did not give up. Look at verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple and says unto him, If thou be the son of God, 
Was he the son of God? I said, was he the son of God? Don't prove anything to Satan. Jesus knew he was the son of God, but that's not Satan's business. That's not the business of the devil. And Jesus was not about to compete with him. And then to prove to Satan, yes, I am. If you try to prove anything to Satan, he's commanding you. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Don't you have the strength? Don't you have the power? If you obey him, you cannot obey God and obey Satan at the same time. You cannot obey the Lord and obey the devil at the same time. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Now he's going to quote the Bible. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest, that, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, again he's going to defeat him by the word. If you have the word of God in your heart, word of God in your mind, word of God in your brain, what of God on your tongue? What of God before your eyes? What of God in your memory? What of God in your conviction? What of God as your backbone? If you are saturated with the word of God, when that tempter comes, you'll be able to say, no, I can't do that. No, I will not do that because it is written. That written word will become the spoken word and become the powerful word in your life. You'll overcome every temptation. Temptation by the tempter, you'll overcome. Temptation by the temptress, you will overcome. Temptation by any power on earth, any personality on earth, overcome us, you'll overcome in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. Jesus says unto her, unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And now you think Satan having got that technical knockdown, that spiritual knockdown, that supernatural knockdown. You think he'll give up. He doesn't give up very easily. He will come again. But when he comes again, the word... The word, the sword of the spirit is what you throw at him and you are going to conquer him. Somebody there I said you are going to conquer him. Look at verse 8 again. The, temp the, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and says unto him all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me, the devil wants worship. And he wanted the Son of God. He wanted Jesus Christ. He wanted a Redeemer. He wanted the wonder, the wonderful one, the counselor, the mighty God. He wanted him to worship him. Think about that. He wants a worship. He wants a commitment. He wants a consecration. He wants you to come and bend and bow unto him. That's what the devil wants. You'll never do that. I said you'll not do that. They'll say, you know, if you'll worship this way, we'll give you this. If you worship that one, we'll give you this. They'll promise you money. They'll promise you riches. They'll promise you glory. They'll promise you maybe wife. They'll promise you husband. They'll promise you child. They'll promise you whatever they promise. And they say, just abandon Christ and bow unto us. You say, never, never, never. I've opened my mouth unto the Lord and I will not go back. Somebody there, I've opened my mouth to the Lord and I will not go back. Somebody there, I've opened my mouth to the Lord and I will not go back. You will not go back in Jesus' name. Verse 10, then says Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. You see that? It's by the word we conquer. It's by the scriptures we conquer. It's by the truth we conquer. It says, it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Verse 11, and the devil leaveth him. Because he couldn't have his way. Satan will not have his way in your life. The devil will not have his way in your life. Evil spirits will not have their ways in your life. Demons will not have their ways in your life. That 
tempting lady, temptress, will not have her way in your life in Jesus' name. That tempter, that man, a messenger of the devil, will not have his way in your life in Jesus' name. Temptation comes to all. It came to Jesus Christ and Jesus overcame and it's going to come. Temptation is going to come. But when temptation comes, already you have seen how Jesus conquered. And thank God, I see conquerors there tonight. I see overcomers there tonight. Temptations in the place of work, you'll conquer. Temptations in your village, you will conquer. Temptations anywhere you go. As they come right, left, center, from the back, and they try to come in a subtle way, you're going to conquer in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 12. It says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh his standeth, take heed lest he fall. Therefore, let him that thinketh his standeth. You know, there are some people, they're overconfident. And when they hear a message like this, they say, Do I need that? I'm a conqueror already. I'm more than a conqueror already. I feel strong. I feel powerful. Why don't, you, why don't you just step down? Why don't you just come from that ivory tower and look at what the Lord is saying? Wherefore, let him that thinketh his standeth take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you, allow you, permit you, to be tempted above that ye are able, but you will with the temptation. Temptation also make a way to escape, and uh, that ye may be able to bear it. You will escape. I said you will escape. There are some areas in which temptations come. The devil will know what you are passionate about. The devil will know what you are eager about. The devil will know what you're seeking after. And you say, I must get this. I must get this. My schoolmate got it. I must get it. My age mate got it. I must get it. Somebody from a local government got it. I must get it. And if you're so passionate about that, and you want it at all costs, and you're forgetting, you're forgetting that you're to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And after that, all these things, it will arch unto you. If you forget that, then the devil can come, the tempter can come from that avenue. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. They that will be rich, they want to be rich overnight without working. They want to gamble. They want to win millions. They want to have millions. They want to have billions. And they want to have foreign currency and this and this. And they say, they dream about it. They think about it. They check on the internet. They check everywhere. They that will be rich by force, quickly, without working, lottery, gambling, whatever it is. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money, that brings temptation. The love of money, that brings a lot of trouble. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after covetousness opens the way, opens the door for the tempter to come. Close that door. Close that door. And the devil will not overcome you in Jesus' name. I said the devil will not overcome you in Jesus' name. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which was some coveted after. They have erred from the faith, and they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. How do you overcome that kind of temptation? Look at verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness. Godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. You'll overcome. I said you will overcome. Uh, look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 3. 
Acts of the Apostle chapter 5, verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie? Why has Satan filled that heart to lie? You see, Ananias had been thinking of something. It's not, uh, it's not just the money. He wanted honor. He wanted fame. He wanted uh, praise. He wanted the apostles to say, that's one of our best members in the Jerusalem church. And all the people are coming and they're giving what they had. And then he came and he sold what he had as possession, but he brought a part. He brought a part, but he brought it as the whole. And he pretended, and it was Satan that tempted him. All temptation to hypocrisy, the Lord will give you victory. All the temptation to pretense, the Lord will give you victory. All the temptation for cheap honor and for cheap glory and for cheap promotion, the Lord will give you the victory in Jesus' name. All that cheap honor. And so Peter said unto him, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost thou, and, and to keep back part of the price of the land. And then it goes on. But the point is, that temptation came from Satan. And who is bringing temptation to this still Satan? He brings temptation your way. And I, I, so you must remember this. That temptation is a gateway. The gateway to your breakthrough. And the gateway to the power of God manifested in your life. And if you want to cross over to that power, you are crossing over. I said you are crossing over. If you want to cross over to that breakthrough at that gate where the devil brings his temptation, you see a capital no, a loud no, an irreversible no, and you will not yield to the devil in your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 3. It says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ he comes and he still does that today but how do we overcome you resist him you reject him you refuse him you renounce him all those things they bring into you I'll give you this no, sir, I don't need that. Whatever I cannot have from God, I reject. Whatever the Heavenly Father will not approve for me, I reject. And whatever I have to, you know, surrender my salvation, surrender my heart, surrender my soul to get, forget about it, I don't want it. And the Lord will satisfy your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at James chapter 4. James chapter 4. I'm reading verse 7. Then I'll back up to verse 6. James chapter 4. I'm starting with verse 7. And then we'll back up to verse 6. James chapter 4. Looking at verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. He'll bring temptation. He'll bring trouble. Bring trial. He bring a kind of coloring something. He'll want you to, you know, temptation for diplomacy. Temptation as a lie. Temptation as hypocrisy. Temptation as pretense. Resist the devil and say no. When he comes to you, what will you say? How will you say that no? How will you say it for him to know that you mean business and you are not going to obey the devil? He might not come directly. He doesn't always come directly. He might come through one, one lady somewhere, Cinderella. And then as she comes and she's saying this and he's saying, I'm going to give myself to you as a gift. What do you say? If I come to you, lady, he's not going to call himself Absalom. He's a murderer at heart, but he's handsome on the face. And he says, I've been looking for you. Where have you been? And you know that she is the tempter. And uh, sisters, what do you say? 
everybody now what do we say no. you will not yield you will not surrender because you submit yourself therefore unto God and you resist the devil and he will flee from you let's look at verse 6 now but he giveth more grace wherefore he says God resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble if you're humble you listen to the word of God and you understand you're not above this the devil can come it can come from any direction. It may soon come. It may come while you are here. It may come while you get back home. It may come on the way. It may come in the office. It may come from a man. It may come from a woman. And then you say a resounding no. And you're not going to yield to the devil. You're going to have victory over every temptation of life in Jesus' name. In First Peter chapter, chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 6. First Peter chapter 5, we're looking at verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, because your enemy, because your poser, because your persecutor, the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom receives steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The wonder of conquering, you will conquer. The wonder of conquering the tempter, you'll conquer every temptation. A woman brings the temptation, you will conquer. I can't hear you. You will conquer. A man brings the temptation, you will conquer in Jesus' name. A money bag. They have this bag, and then they're carrying it. It may be Ghana must go. That's, you know, there's a kind of sack they call like that. And they say, if you know what is inside that place, you will do whatever I tell you to do. If you know what I can get out of that sack, you will do whatever I will tell you to do. You say, don't worry to open the sack. I don't want a farthing. I don't want a penny. I don't want a cover. I don't want a naira. Out of that bag, I stand for righteousness. I will not join corruption. I will not be corrupt. And you stand for the truth and you stand for righteousness. That will be the gateway. The gate of wonders will happen to you in Jesus' name. You are not going to yield to the temper because you have the wonder of conquering the tempter by the word. I come to point number two and it's the wonder of conformity in totality to the world. You know, many people don't understand this. They want to do the works of Jesus. They don't want to be like Jesus. They want to have the wonders of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, the manifestation of Jesus, and they do not understand. It's the heart. It's the nature. It's the identification. It's the internalization of who Jesus is, and you become like him. And when you are like him, then you will do what he did. His power will manifest through your life. And the glory of his name will work through you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this, you know, the people that want to have the power, but not the nature. The people that want to have the manifestation, they don't want to have the mind of Christ. And the people that want to have the wonders of Christ, they do not want to have the wealth of the knowledge of Christ. You know who you can talk, you can liken them to? The people that want certificate without education. They don't want to go through the studies. They don't want to go through the subjection. They don't want to go through the discipline of having, going to class, learning from the teacher, learning from the lecturer, and yet they want the certificate. Do you want a certificate like that? I'm asking, do you want a certificate like that? Certificate without study. Certificate without examination. I don't want any certificate like that because it will be worthless. I said it will be worthless, but then the real sin, 
How many of you want the real thing? You get the real thing in Jesus' name. And that's why, number one, the conformity we have to Christ in totality. Before then, his power will flow through you. His courage will flow through you. His manifestation will flow through you. Look at the desire of the Lord and look at the program of the Lord in Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Conformity. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That's why Jesus said, he that believeth in me, the works I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father, he gets hold of you. He gets you converted. And he gets you conformed unto his image. And when you are conformed unto his image, you love what he loves. You hate what he hates. You do what he does. You learn what he has taught. You receive his word. You abide in his word. And in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, in your nature, in the inner man, you are like him. And when you are conformed to him like that, then the power will come. Power will come upon you today. The power to overcome will come to you today in Jesus' name. The foundation of that is conformity in totality to his word. We're looking at Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Look at that. Look at that. It's going to use your hand to work that miracle, present it to the Lord. It's going to use your feet to go there. You are his feet today. You are his hands today. You are his eyes today. You are his ears today. And you are the body, members of the body of Christ today. And he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. If you're going to be conformed to Christ, be not conformed to this world. Don't say what they say. Don't go where they go. Don't drink what they drink. Don't wear what they wear. And don't join the secret society or the secret cult. Called. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Conformity. As we talk about conformity, how does it happen? Number one, he was crucified. You're crucified. Number two, he died on the cross. You are dead to sin. Number three, he was buried, and so you are buried in the water of baptism. And then he rose again, number four, and you rise in newness of life. And then he ascended on high, and is seated on the right hand of majesty on high, and you're seated together with him in high places. When you are that conformed unto the Lord, power will flow through you. Anointing will flow through you. You understand? It's not, going to, it's not going to pass the oil of anointing through a rusty pie. It's not going to pass that oil of anointing and the oil of power. It's not going to pass that through a rusty pipe. It will corrode everything. It will corrupt everything. It will destroy everything. He wants to make you conformed. First of all, unto himself. And when you are conformed unto himself, wonder of all wonders, you will do wonders. Your words will carry authority. And anything, any statement you make, or transits you make, they will carry authority in Jesus' name. Look at what I told you now. Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20. Here is where it begins. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Self is crucified with Christ. 
the human nature is crucified with Christ. The Adamic nature is crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's power. Christ liveth in me, that's anointing. Christ liveth in me, that's triumph. Christ liveth in me, that's victory. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, if the self is ugly, and if that ugly thing inside there is still raising its ugly head, you cannot manifest the power of Christ. If the life of Christ, manifestation of Christ, the anointing of Christ, and the glory of Christ, and the wonders of Christ, if they're going to be manifested in your life, that thing that is called I, the big I, is coming from the nature of Satan. It's, nature that's, it's the Satan that said, I will, I will, I will, I will. And if you are like that, that's the nature of Satan. If you want the manifestation of his power, the manifestation of his wonders, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life, and the life, and the life which I now live, and the character which I now manifest, and the conduct which I now have, and the direction of life which I now have, and the behavior which I now have, and the life which I now live, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It will happen in your life. I said it will happen in your life. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 6. And we're looking at verse 6. Knowing this, that old man is crucified with him. Conformity with Christ. Your old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth ye should not serve sin. Look at verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. All those sins that try, like, uh, you know, holding on to you like tentacles. Holding on to you like roots. Or you uproot them. You throw them away. Because now conformity to Christ, Christ will not do that. Christ will not think like that. Christ will not go there. Christ will not touch that. Christ will not drink that. Christ will not wear that. Christ will not join that society. And because now you are like Christ, identified with Christ, conformed unto Christ, so that you can manifest the very nature and the very life and the very ministry of Jesus Christ, you become conformed unto him. And it says you are dead to sin. Look at verse 8 now. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing this, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. I will not have dominion over you. I said, will not have dominion over you. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, 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 reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. It will come like temptation. It will come like an uninvited guest. And he'll say, I want to sleep with you tonight. Never. I want to stay with you today. Never. I want to associate with you today. Never. I want to get inside your heart today. Never. Because you'll not let sin reign in your mortal body. That you should obey it in the lost thereof. Thank God you are free. I say, thank God you are free. You are crucified with him. You are dead with him. You are buried with him. You are going to rise up with him. And you rise up in power. Resurrection power. Rise up in power. Look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Here is what takes place. Total identification with Christ. Total conformity with Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things on above, 
and not on things on the earth. Your desires, let it go up higher. Your aspiration, let it go up higher. Your pursuit, let it go up higher. Your dreams, let it go up higher. And your aspirations and all things you're seeking after, let it go up higher. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You'll appear with him in glory. I said you'll appear with him in glory. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Reading from verse 5. Let this might be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How could you say you want the manifestation of the ministry of Christ and then you don't have the nature of Christ, the mind of Christ, and the desires of Christ, and the leanings of Christ, and the lifestyle of Christ? It says, if you're going to identify with him, if you're going to be conformed unto him, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant, and he was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. You see that? If you're going to be conformed to Christ, you'll humble yourself. You're not saying the ivory tower over there. I'm above every other person. I'm above the word of God. I'm above the preaching. I'm above whatever they're sharing. I'm above that. And I must be treated specially here. Come down. Come down. Because that ivory tower will exclude you. That ivory tower will make you to miss the power of Christ in your life. Become conformed to Christ. And then a miracle will happen through you. I said miracles will happen through you. Be found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him because of that. And given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And if you want that honor, you'll come and say, Lord, I want to be like you. I want to think like you. I want to act like you. I want to behave like you. I want to do things like you. That conformity will bring you to the miracle life. You are coming there today. I said you are coming there today. Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Colossians 2, verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and stabilized in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It says, to be conformed to Christ, you have his mind, you have his life, you have his nature, you have his character, you have his behavior, and you're rooted and grounded in that nature. Then he says in verse 8, beware of this now, beware of this now, beware lest any man spoil you. Through philosophy, they'll try to make you deviate, try to make you branch off, but you say no. I'm looking for Christ. I want Christ. The totality of Christ in my heart, in my mind, in my will, in my thoughts, in my imagination, in my spirit. I want to be saturated with the personality of Christ within me. That is the secret that your life will be a wonder. That is the secret. Your family will be a wonder. That is the secret. When you pray, wonders will happen. Look at this passage. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Come to verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily 
and ye are complete in him. And ye are complete in him. What else do we need? Ye are complete in him. You come into Christ. He comes into you. He lives in you. He abides in you. It's your energy. It's your power. It's your motivation. It's the very foundation of life inside you. And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. I pray that today, this will be affected in your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to 1 John, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 6. 1 John chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 6. It tells us in 1 John chapter 2, and in verse 6, here is the word of God telling us, I will become like him, conformed unto him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walk, conformity in totality unto the truth, that is truth personified, which is Christ himself. He that says, he that confesses, he that testifies, he that tells other people that he abides in him, must also himself walk even as Christ walked. Look at chapter 3 verse 1. Chapter 3 verse 1 Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Look at verse 3. Every man, every man, every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. How? Purifies himself to what level? Purifies himself in what way? Even as he is pure. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Look at verse 4 here. Verse 4 here says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look at verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein, in this way, this is how we know. We have come to him. We identify with him. We are conformed unto him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because, because, tell me, because, read it there, because, shout it out. Go on. First John chapter 4 verse 17. Because, say the rest. Say that confidently now. Read that fluently. Read it to your own understanding. As he is talking about Christ, identification now, total conformity now. As he is, so are we in this world. Tell me, if you're like that, power will flow through you. That power is flowing through you tonight. That function is flowing through you tonight. That anointing is flowing through you tonight because of this total conformity unto Christ. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 21. For, for even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Number one, the wonder of conquering the tempter. You will conquer. Temptation will not conquer you. I said temptation will not put your back to the wall. You will stand firm and you will stand victorious against every temptation in Jesus name. The temptation to succumb. The temptation to fall. The temptation to backslide. The temptation to take the bite in the hook. 
that Satan as a fisherman is trying to fish you. He's trying to get you out of the kingdom. That temptation will fail. And you will stand in Jesus' name. When Satan comes and he brings this and he dazzles this and he says, look at this, dangle this before you. What are you to say? How are you to say that? How are you to make him know you mean what you say? If that lady comes, what are you going to say? That man comes, what are you going to say? That fellow that is rolling the eyeball and says, uh -uh, don't you know me? Are you going to say you don't know what I mean? Are you going to say you don't understand me? And then it's trying to impose herself on you. What do you say? And when those uh, money bags and those uh, corrupt people, they have stolen from here, stolen from there, stolen from there, and, you, and they are saying, you know what it is? Just sign under that paper. And as you sign there, just say that you'll deposit this for me so that we, I'll give you the dimension, the percentage. What do you say? No. You will not fall. I said you will not fall. Because God will give you greater in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the wonder of conquering the tempter by the word. Number two, the wonder of conformity, totality to the word. Number three, the wonder of continuity in the truth of the word. Continuation in the truth of the word. Continuing in the truth of the word. I will continue. I said, I will continue. Your voice is getting weaker. My own is getting stronger. You will continue in Jesus' name. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 30. John chapter 8. We're looking at verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Thank God I believe on him. I said, thank God, I believe on him. All things are possible for me because I believe. All things are possible for you because you believe. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. If he continue, that's a secret. If he continue, it's not only at the retreat. You know, there are people, they, they are saints at the retreat. The students of the world at the retreat. The soldiers of the cross at the retreat, and their people that say were servants of the Lord at the retreat, were sons of God at the retreat, and then they go out there and they go outside the gate. Looks like, are you still a soldier? And are you still standing? Are you still a son? Are you still a daughter? If ye continue, I will continue. I said, I will continue. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Chains are broken, shall make you free. Shackles are broken, shall make you free. Yokes are broken, shall make you free. The cords are snapped, shall make you free. All, your, all the abomination that attach themselves unto you, they are cleansed away, shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thank God I am free. I say, thank God I am free. That's why you make up your mind to continue. In First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 24, First John chapter 2, we're reading from verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. Everything you have heard from the beginning, don't hear and forget. Hear and retain. Hear and keep. Hear and store in your heart and store in your mind. Hear and make it a belt of truth around you. Here and go about with it so that people will know that is what you have heard and they will know that you have been to the feet of Jesus and learned from him you will not forget I said you will not forget 
when that time comes for you to bring out the word and it comes out in power and authority, you will not forget in Jesus' name. Let that abide. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning abide, remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. You will continue in the Son and in the Father. How long are you going to continue? I said, how long are you going to continue? I'll continue forever and ever until the end of your life. And if you do that, power will never fail you. Anointing will never fail you. Authority will never fail you. Miracles will never be missing your life in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. From verse 12, ye, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus, tell me, tell me out loud, shall suffer persecution. Hold on, hold on. You see, there are people, that's what they're afraid of, persecution. Persecution. You know what? If you're coming, the devil will try to wave something at you that he calls persecution or position. But you are covered in the blood of Jesus. You are covered by the name of Jesus. And you are strengthened. You have a backbone. You'll be able to endure because Christ lives on the inside of you. But if you say persecution, because of that, I will not stay. Then you go out. You don't have any power. No resistance. No protection. No blood of Jesus. No name of Jesus. And you're all alone by yourself. And Satan will say, Aha, uh -huh. you come out of that place. Why did you go there? I'll teach you a lesson. And then the persecution you're still trying to avoid, is he going to bring that same thing? You may call it by another name, but now you don't have any support, you don't have any power, and you don't have any sustenance, and you don't have any grace, and that thing will crush that backslider. I will not backslide. I said I will not backslide. I will not leave the Lord. I will abide. Somebody there, I will abide. Somebody there shouting, let Satan hear, I will abide in Christ. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue, continue, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. If Christ has spoken the truth to you and you have accepted Christ, and you have accepted his truth. Continue. That truth will bring you to victory. And will make you sustain. And remain in that victory. You'll be victorious all the days of your life. In Jesus name. First Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly unto them. That thy Profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine, unto the truth, unto the word, unto the teaching, unto what you have learned. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. I will continue. Till the very end, we will continue in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. But Christ, as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, firm unto when? Unto the end, unto the end, 
on to the end. You will not die by the wayside. You will not finish your journey halfway through. Power will follow you all through your life. Assurance will follow you through all your life. Triumph will follow you throughout your life in Jesus' name. Verse 12, take it, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ. Look at this. We're made partakers of this. Digest this. We're made partakers of Christ. Swallow this up. We're made partakers of Christ. Understand this. Hold on to this. It says we're made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence tested fast until what time? Unto the end. Unto the end. Unto the end. The people who go astray in the middle of the way, there'll be no power, there'll be no strength because that conformity is no more there. Then the manifestation of the wonder will not be there anymore. But the manifestation will continue in your life. Look at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already. That which ye have already. Somebody there, do you have anything at all? I said, do you have anything at all? That which ye have already. Do you have anything at all? I have Christ. I have redemption. I have salvation. I have holiness. I have a ticket to heaven. I have inheritance of heaven. I have victory. I have triumph. I have power. I have the Holy Ghost. I have the promises of God. I have the name that cannot fail. I have the power that cannot fail. I have the utterance of faith that moves every mountain. Somebody there, do you have anything? You have the power of the Holy Ghost. You have the illumination of the Holy Ghost. You have the doctrines of the Bible. You have the assurance of God in your heart. And you have the hope of getting to heaven. Somebody there, do you have anything? That which you have, hold fast until I come. And he that overcometh, who is that? He that overcometh, I said, who is that? He that overcometh and keepeth my works, tell me, unto the end, unto the end, the same to him will I give power over the nations. I will give power over the nations. Let all weakness depart out of your heart right now. And let all timidity get out of you right now. And you will give your power. I said it will give you power. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, 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 don't look any other direction. Behold, look at Christ. And look at how you are conformed unto him. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Shout amen. amen. Let them hear outside the camp. Amen. amen. Gently put your Bible down and stand up. Gently put your Bible down and stand up. Weakness, get away in Jesus' name. Fainting, get away in Jesus' name. Doubt, get away in Jesus' name. Unbelief, get out in Jesus' name. Poverty, get out in Jesus' name. Barrenness, get out in Jesus' name. Weariness, get out in Jesus' name. Impossibility, get out in Jesus' name. Mountain, come out in Jesus' name. That tempter, get out in Jesus' name. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents 
and on scorpions and over all and over all and over all the power of the enemy and nothing nothing from the sea nothing from the sky nothing from the bush nothing from your village nothing from any shrine nothing from anywhere nothing from any synagogue and nothing nothing from your grandfather nothing from your background nothing from your ancestors and nothing nothing from territorial spirit nothing from any mountain and nothing from any valley and nothing nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing shall by any means hurt you accept it believe it possess it open your mouth and tell the lord 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 you're victorious you're victorious you're victorious you're victorious you're victorious nothing nothing but nothing nothing with nothing nothing but nothing shall ever hurt you tell the lord 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 you're strong you're mighty and there's nothing that will hurt you this is your father's land the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof you can walk to the right walk to the left walk to the front walk to the back look at the north look at the east look at the south and look at the west it's your father's territory it's your father's inheritance and nothing and nothing and nothing shall by any means hurt you that poison will be neutralized. That disease will be totally cancelled. That infirmity is taken away. That oppression is taken away. That demonic power is cancelled tonight. It's cancelled tonight because nothing, 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 and nothing shall be able to hurt you, shall be able to harm you because you're victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am victorious. Every mountain will move away. Every sickness will move away. Every infirmity will move away. Nothing. 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 Now you can succeed. Nothing. Now you can have children. Nothing. Now you can have a job. Nothing. Now you can have your wife. Nothing. Now you can have a husband. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Victorious. Victorious. You stand at the gate. You stand at the gate. And the temptation might be there. But you know what the devil is trying to do? Is bringing temptation. He wants to cut you off from victory. He wants to cut you off from achievement. He wants to cut you off from all that God has for you. But nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Victory. Victory. Success. Breakthrough. It's yours tonight. It's yours tonight. It's yours tonight. Rise up. Rise up in the strength of the Lord. In the might of the Lord. You cannot fail. You cannot fall. You will not fail. You will not fall. That power that hope upholds the universe is upholding you. Miracles are your way. Wonders in your way. Signs in your way, deliverance in your way, healing in your way, mountain moving away, out of your way. All those demon attacks and oppressions that go in the way right now. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Conformity to Christ, conquering the temptation, continuing in the truth.
In Jesus' name we pray. You believe you are more than a conqueror now. In Jesus' name we pray. Every mountain moving out of your life, out of your family, out of your career, out of your profession. In Jesus' name we pray. You have power. I said you have power. I said you have power. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you tonight because you have moved us, every one of us, to the victory side. I pray, O oh Lord, every defeat is cancelled from every life in Jesus' name. All those mountains of problems, mountains of sickness, mountains of affliction, mountains of insanity, mountains of madness, mountains of impossibility, come out in Jesus' name.